I am going to attempt to run through a few trigonometric problem solving equations, mostly solving for unknown angles. The first one that I'm going to start out with is one that uh, I have found in standards that are expectations from colleges for high school students to be able to accomplish prior to going to a college calculus class. So we're given this problem that cosine squared minus sine is equal to five. Uh, they tell us it's quadratic form. So this is a strong hint in how we are expected to solve this. And then it says solve for sine x and determine values for x. Really, I think as far as being given a problem, this gives you a lot of information and really guides you through the process. One thing that you may not be aware of or may not remember, and this is kind of the, the key besides the given information, is you need to know what the Pythagorean identity is so that you can do a substitution. So that is the piece that you're going to have to bring into this problem. So I'm going to take the cosine square out and replace it with 1 minus sine square x and then the rest of this equation stays the same. Now quadratic form is important here. That was a clue. We have a square, we have a single term, we need to get a constant and we need this equal to zero. So we're just going to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation here. I'm bringing the 5 over to the left hand side of the equation and I'm going to add it with the 1 term. So this is going to be negative 4. So now I have a coefficient of negative 1, negative 1, and a constant of negative 4. And this is going to go into the quadratic formula. So plugging in our values, I have my b value here is negative 1. I plug that into here. Uh, I made sure that I put parentheses in here so that you can see that we are tracking all of the negatives. The formula has negative in it, and I'm introducing another negative, so this term becomes positive. Over here, this term is negative. It'll be squared, so it'll become positive. I have minus 4, my a term, and my c term. Notice that I have all negatives over here. This determinant is going to be negative, and that means that we are going to end up with some complex answers. So if you are looking specifically for real solutions, then you are not going to get real solutions for this problem. And down here in the denominator, I have two times the negative one lead coefficient here. One other thing that we need to point out, I haven't said what this quadratic formula is equal to, and this is an important concept for students as well. Normally when we do the quadratic formula, this is equal to x because x is the variable, it's the independent variable in which we're solving for. But we're not solving for x right now, we are solving for sine x. We've taken the sine x here as the thing that we're solving for. And so this goes in with this hint, solve for sine x. This thing is not equal to x, this thing is equal to sine x. And lastly, we're told to determine the values for x. If we want to know this thing for x, we need to take the arc sine of both sides. So x is going to be equal to the arc sine, our x's will be the arc sine of this. This is at least two solutions. You're going you have a case where you have addition in the numerator and a case where you have subtraction in the numerator and then you do need to determine what angles that you can have to make this a true statement and these are going to have to be complex solutions. There are no real solutions. The next problem that I'm going to solve is this one. This is also from the standards that I've been using. So this is something that colleges expect that 
incoming students going into a college class should be reasonably expected to solve. And we are told to show how to determine V given the absolute value of cosine of 2V minus 3 plus 3 halves equals 2. And so we need to get to a point where V equals something. The first thing that I want to do is I want to move the two-thirds to the right-hand side so that I have only the absolute value expression on the left-hand side. So now that we have this, we are just going to do the arithmetic on this side. Doing the arithmetic on this side, we are going to have to change forms. This is 2 over 1, and then we multiply top and bottom by 2. So we end up with 4 over 2. So we have 4 minus 3. This is going to be 1 half. And now we have to deal with the absolute value. At some point, you should have had to study solving for absolute value variables. At some point, you should have had to have studied solving absolute value equations, possibly in an Algebra 1 course. I tell my students that you should create two cases for this. You should e expect and look for two solutions, just like you do with quadratics. So I'm going to create two cases. For case one, we take the left-hand side, just as it is, but dropping the absolute value. And we're going to set this equal to the thing on the right-hand side. So the only change in case one is we drop the absolute value. In case two, we are also copying the left-hand side as is without the absolute value. But this time, when we copy the right-hand side, we are changing the sign on it. At this point, we are solving these two cases for V, and that will be the determination of V that we were instructed to find. So now I need to take the arc cosine of both sides. And this is a term you may have had to memorize at some point. I like to have my students understand this chart, at least for the degrees. Uh, you could also have memorized this chart in radian measure, and so you have the equivalent radian measure in there also. We are looking for a side ratio of a half with cosine. So if we come down this chart to a half, we find that that is 60 degrees. Depending on the instructions that you're given, you may be instructed to solve in radian or degree. Typically, in a college preparation course, you are more and more using radian measure and less using the degree measure. So our answer here is going to be pi thirds in radian measure. And at this point, it's kind of an Algebra 1 exercise. We're going to add 3 to both sides. And then all of this is going to be divided by 2 so that we have... pi 6 plus 3 halves, and this is an exact value, it's not an approximation. So there's one that we have there. Now, over here we have the arc cosine of negative half. 
So we are rotating in a clockwise direction 60 degrees. So you might use the unit circle for this. And then we're back at the same situation. We're just going to solve this for V. So I'm going to add three to both sides. And then I'm going to divide by two. And so on this one, I have five pi six plus three halves. And these are the two V values that would make this a original statement true. Cheerful calculations. Thank you.